everybody. Thank you for coming back after lunch and our snafu. And Betty was going to go first, and now I'm back going first. So I thank you all for coming and for listening to me, because you're probably thinking, who is this? I don't know who she is. I don't know her work, other than I'm the one with the fairy hair. So <laughs> I've met a lot of you because of my, my hair tinsel. Um, but as Bonnie said, and thank you for that introduction, Bonnie. Um, yes, I have a problem with chronic volunteering and saying yes too often. And I have a feeling there's several of you in this room who also suffer from the same condition. So about a year ago, I popped into a, a call for conference planning with CMA2. And I was actually on the road. I was in San Diego for the first time in my life. And and I hear Sally say, well, we should do some mini presentations. And I'm like, oh, I could do that. Like, did that just come out of my mouth? Oh my god, what have I done? So I let it go. And then a couple of days later, I'm like, no, no, really, I don't want to do it. And Sally's like, yeah, yeah, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. So put together a few talking points and let me know what you want to talk about. And I'm like, well, I could be in front of a bunch of mosaic artists. And the only thing I'm really an expert in is myself <laughs> and my own mosaic journey. So I don't know how many people want to hear about that, but that's what I put my talking points together about. And then I got the first email with the lineup of who was going to be speaking. <laughs> and I went, oh my god what have i gotten myself into i should not be up here on stage talking to anybody in this group um, with these people who are going to speak before and after me i was freaking out so i thought who am i to speak after these amazing mosaicists who are so much more educated talented prolific and experienced than I am. And I went, light bulb, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. Because I know many of you here this weekend are also new as well, and I've, I've met you. Um, so how many of you, I should, I should, that's cheating, I'll go back. So, <laughs> and so I, I don't want to give the answers away. So how, I think we would all agree that everybody on this flyer is an artist. Whether you call yourself a mosaicist or an artist working in a different medium, I think we can all agree that they are artists. But how many of you out there will also call yourself an artist? Uh-oh, everybody, I don't need to talk anymore. <laughs> no, there are a few people who did not raise their hands, and I did take Kim's workshop the other day, and she defiantly said, I don't need to call myself an artist. I just do what I want, and I love that too. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, but that's not what I'm talking about. We do have some of the same philosophies as I was in her workshop thinking, oh my gosh, she's, she's actually teaching exactly what I was going to say, but I get to be up here today. So <laughs> for those of you who are in her workshop, you're going to hear some, some repeats. So for those of you who didn't raise your hand, what are some of the reasons why you won't call yourself an artist? Anybody shout it out. I don't make enough money at it. <laughs> <laughs> Not good enough. Not good enough. Experience. Experience. Imposter syndrome, don't know what you're doing. Exactly. Did you cheat when I when I put this for you? But yeah, these were some of the reasons that I found no training, right? I'm not there yet. And these are some of the categories. I didn't go to art school. I don't have the credentials. I'm not good enough. People will know that I'm really a fraud. Who am I to put my work out there, right? Or I'm waiting until you name it. I get some sort of validation. But does any of that really matter? No, no, it's all about the process. It's all about what you are doing and whether you enjoy it or not. Because art is so subjective, it really doesn't matter. But let's talk about what the definition of an artist is. Historically, when you heard the word artist, it was all about painters and sculptors. But the more modern definition is anyone who creates with imagination and skill. So 
by definition, we are all artists. Once you have created something, you are an artist. Just like Helen said in her talk this morning, you know those early mosaics that you made with leaves and rocks and things? As kids, we're all artists. We just forget mm -hmm. it as we grow up. Um, and I, I firmly believe that we are part of a really exciting movement in mosaics at this time because historically, mosaics were, the designs were created by painters and then skilled artisans were the ones who created it. Think of the, the Marc Chagall uh, mosaic in Chicago. And, you know, he may have put some pieces in, but it was the artisans who really created it. But we are of this generation where we are not only the artisans, but we are the artists, the creators behind the designs. Um, so unlike being a doctor, a teacher, or a driver, or a lawyer, being an artist doesn't require any sort of certification or license. So in, in, a, in a way, being an artist is, is amazing because, because anybody can do it. Um, some of the most admired of art, artists in history didn't go to art school. Vincent van Gogh, Frida Kahlo. Now, I'm not belittling an art education, of course. Anybody who went to college or art school or anything and got it, a BFA or an MFA, you are just, I think, worlds ahead of the self-taught among us. But I'm fascinated by other mosaic artists' stories, and one of my favorite things to do is to listen to the CMA Second Monday uh, recordings that are on the website and hear the stories of each of you who have spoken and hear your backgrounds and how you came to mosaics. Um, and there are many here this weekend who don't have art backgrounds who are amazing contemporary mosaic artists, and you are all in inspirations to me. Growing up, I was great at arguing with my, with my parents, and they said, you should be a lawyer. So I went, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I forget who said that earlier this morning, you know, following what, what you're told to do. Mm. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna go to college. I was the first one in my family to go to college. And while I was there, I loved history and I loved reading and I thought, well, maybe I want to be a professor. And, you know, you don't make much money as a professor. And, 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 yeah. Let's go to law school. I'm still going to stay the course. So I went to law school. I passed the bar exam. And then I practiced for a few years. So I checked that off my box. And then I stopped um, to have a family for 10 years, and I went back to work part-time as an adjunct professor teaching undergraduate law classes. So there I was a professor as well. Check that one off the box, and, and a mom, and, which was a career in itself. And then um, all during those years, I found ways to be creative, volunteering at the kids' schools. I learned how to do stained glass, traditional stained glass. But all of my artistic endeavors were secondary and temporary, and I never really fit, I never really found anything that struck me. So it wasn't until I was 49 and I did my first mosaic, which was that crab mosaic you saw earlier, and I was just blindsided. I went, ah, unlike stained glass, mosaics are so freeing. And I thought, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna figure out how to do it full time. So I uh, continued teaching for a while, um, but I still didn't, I, and I, I started creating as often as I could, but I still didn't call myself an artist. My mom is a lifelong oil painter and self-taught, and she encouraged me to just, just join, just sign up for these local exhibitions. And even after I won a few uh, small um, honorable mentions, a second place, you know, in local shows, I still didn't call myself an artist. I thought, who am I if I say I'm an artist? Artist, then um, people are going to know I'm a fraud because I didn't go to art school. Which brings me to my second reason why people say that they are not artists, and that is the imposter syndrome. Has everybody heard of that before? I had it until I started making mosaics, but then I realized, oh, I felt like that as an attorney too, and a professor. <laughs> like hey, it's just me. But some of the thoughts that you may encounter that are part of imposter syndrome are, I'm not good enough. If, if my piece is good, I just got lucky putting it together. Others are more talented. I, I'm, I don't wanna put myself out there. I, I'm afraid I'm gonna fail and I'll be exposed as a fraud. Um, 
how many people have ever felt like that? Okay, yeah, exactly. Well, statistics are seven out of 10 people feel like that at some point in their lives. So if you haven't, you're amazing. <laughs> um, and it, it's universal. And it usually hits, uh, more likely to hit women. The term actually started in the 1970s when more women were be, uh, becoming executives in companies and felt like they shouldn't be there. And so this term was coined. Um, so high achievers, creatives, those with confidence issues, and perfectionists. And I know there's some other fellow perfectionists in the room, so I check all of those boxes. So I, I have felt like an imposter many times in my life. And as a recovering perfectionist, my philosophy is that mosaics um, are wonderful because the beauty is in the imperfections. Even if they're perfectly um, uh, created, there are still those tiny imperfections that make it interesting. And so after creating for only about a year and a half, I applied for an emerging artist residency and got to move into our local art center. I was in a studio space, it's an old elementary school, surrounded by 12 BFAs and MFA painters. So I was seriously intimidated because as Michelle and I were talking earlier, there's this hierarchy where you know people who um, are artists, you know, there there are some people out there, and I have some in my in my art center. Um, sorry, guys, if you're going to watch this later, um, who you know have big big ideals and expectations. Not everybody is like that. And luckily, my studio mate. Um, who was also not a painter, she was a, a quilt artist. And she and I would often talk about this issue. And uh, we were aware of it, and we were both working on it together to call ourselves an artist and feel worthy of this residency and being in um, the art center. And so we, we decided we were just gonna show up every day that we could, ask questions, learn as much as we could, and apply what we could to our own mediums. And I have to I have to admit, over the last four years, I feel like I have earned the respect of my peers at the Art Center. And I do have to also admit that it is still kind of cool to get a compliment from one of my fellow MFA artists. And uh, I, I have gotten those over the years. So I have a few suggestions for how to banish the doubt and get rid of that imposter syndrome um, that's making you question yourself and, and, call your, and not call yourself an artist. And some of those ways are to normalize those feelings. Know that you're not alone. A lot of people feel the same way that you may feel. Um, also celebrate your progress. I just recently went back, because I've been so busy creating every you know, minute that I can, I finally went back and found that picture for this of my very first mosaic. And looking back at it, I'm like, yeah, that was really cute, and that was fun, and you know, but look how far I've come, and look at the um, ways that I've grown, and you know, it, you, so you have to do that. You have to celebrate the successes, um, and also surround yourself with the Mosaic community. You're all here, so you're doing that. And remember that the CMA2 website is a great place for that. Uh, put your work in the gallery. Engage with other Mosaic artists, because. You're my people. We're, we're each other's people, and that's what we're here for. And this amazing group is so non judgmental and supportive. It's just wonderful. And that'll help you get over that as well. Um, also, positive affirmations. Don't think those thoughts or say to yourself things that you wouldn't say to someone else. It's easy to go, I'm not good enough, you know, and then. Just put your work out there. Somebody's gonna give you a compliment. Art's so subjective. So, and remember that flare-ups are gonna occur, so just keep going, keep going. Um, the third reason for people not using the title of artist are that feeling that they haven't had validation. They need to wait, I need to learn more, I need to get into a gallery, I need to sell. And none of that, none of that is required to call yourself an artist. Creating mosaics or any art is a practice. Um, we've all made work that we wouldn't even give away to someone, but it's taught us many lessons, and Kim said this, this the other day. You actually, you have to start 
in order to learn, and you have to finish what you start for it to teach you lessons as well. I hope I got that right, Kim. Um, and and that's right. You know, there's there's no finish line where we can check a box and go, okay, I've done it. Now I'm an artist. You know, it's just it's all in the process. Um, my analogy is, <laughs> it's like having a baby. So I remember going to the hospital when I had my my daughter and she was born and then my husband and I were looking at each other like, we have to leave now? You mean, <laughs> you just taught us how to change a diaper and how to feed this baby and now I have to take this tiny human home by myself or you know, by ourselves? I had never even babysat before. But you know, you're thrown into it, you're, you're gonna learn how to do it and she's 25 now so I think we did a pretty good job. Um, so you don't have to have outside validation. Validation comes from inside. You don't have to sell. So many people here are just making for themselves. It's, selling is, is not a requirement. It's making art is just creating and finding a way to express yourself. Um, so no matter how many years of experience you have, you can give yourself the confidence um, to say that you're an artist by doing certain things that you can control. And that is by knowing your stuff, making your work technically sound, and uh, take workshops and classes. And obviously you're all interested in doing that because you're here and learning. And there's so many opportunities on the CMA2 website for you to learn. Just listening to the art chats and the camp talks, you get little tidbits uh, uh, that you might have already known, forgotten, it's good reminders. Make, make, make as often as you can because there's nothing like learning from your own mistakes and your own work. Um, present your work in the best way possible. The finishing touches mean a lot. Finish the back, the way you frame it. Clean it up. That shows a lot about you as an artist and your pride in your work. Um, take great photographs, or make sure you photograph it so you can track your progress, but take, try to take good ones. I know it's really hard for mosaics to show up in photographs. Um, or have someone else take a photograph for you and know how to talk about what you've created. The stories behind the work that we've seen in the gallery or in the silent auction or even here in the presentations are that much richer when you hear the stories behind the work. So if you don't have a story behind your work, you just made something pretty, make it up. <laughs> That's part of the creative process. And it can change over time because you know what different people see may um, be different each time they look. So it's such an exciting time, as I said, to be a mosaic artist. Um, you are not only the creator of the, the finished product, but you're the creator of the image. And that creativity allows you to call yourself an artist. So no matter what your level of experience, remember there are no rules about who can be an artist. And don't worry if you feel flare-ups of imposter syndrome, thinking about coming to this conference, not to mention talking, uh, made me really scared and stressed for the last week or so. And I know I told many of you this, there's so many people here that I've watched online and I've taken workshops from, either online or in person, and it's, it's intimidating to come and meet you all in person. And I had fangirl going on, so I took lots of pictures with everybody. But it's uh, it's so it's so exciting and it's such a great such a great um, community and I felt really comfortable once I knew I could talk to everybody and we're all just people right so what's the worst that can happen if you put yourself out there so since starting to make mosaics I have been uncharacteristically brave and confident I've said yes to things sometimes too many times at once. Um, that push the limit. Uh, Kate Kerrigan and I were talking. Sometimes you do projects, you just, you have this great idea and you jump in and then you do it and then you step back and you go, my God, how did I do that? I don't even remember how I did that. And so I've had a couple of public art projects that, that I've done so far and I've only been doing this for six years. So I've gone from making that little crab to um, entering local art exhibits creating public art, becoming a member of a gallery, and even having my first solo exhibition. So I hope that 
you can take a little bit of what I've said for those of you who are new or who have been doing this forever and haven't just put yourself out there if you want to. Be honest with yourself if you want to or not, and either way is fine. But I hope this pep talk helped a little bit. And so now I'm gonna ask for all of you, now who will call themselves an artist? Everybody, everybody, four hands, yay, good. All right, then I did my job, so.